Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you may see this, dear friends, uh, this is the result of the coronavirus, uh, corona uh, virus, COVID-19. And so I'm coming to you for our year-end town hall meeting via uh, technology. And uh, I'm terribly upset that I can't be with you in person because there's so many things that we have to talk about. So many things that are important to you and important to me. This is officially my last semester as president. At least I think uh, my tenure was supposed to end in January of 2020. But I was asked by the state university to stay on for another semester while they continue to search for a new president. And I've enjoyed my stay. Uh, I've found out a lot more about myself and about you and about this college as a result of COVID-19. And uh, it's drawn me even closer to you. I want to thank all the faculty and uh, staff and students who participated in the renaming of the library for me. What a great honor that was and continues to be. Um, so just welcome to our town hall meeting. Please accept uh, this video. Uh, and I'm going to read some of the questions that I've been asked and uh, give the answers. Um, and I just will miss the feedback. Uh, but I know that our campus is strong. Uh, resolute and determined to make sure that our students get the best education possible. And what a tremendous faculty we have here at the State University, Old Westbury. A strong and resilient, uh, intellectual, these men and women are the best anywhere. State University, City University, and the private colleges. We have a top-notch faculty and to the students you can learn, learn from them. And what I really miss is our opportunity to be together because that's one of the strengths of Old Westbury. We're doing distance learning now, teleconferencing, Zoom, but our strength is in our social interactions, both on and off campus. Our strength is the, the touch of the faculty, uh, the, the faculty's um, uh, uh, warmth and desire to be one with the student body. They're tough. Faculty members are very tough, but that's for the student's benefit so that you learn. And that personal interaction, that in-classroom interaction is what we are strongest at. And we want you to Come on back home. Finish your degrees at Old Westbury. There are now encouragements to, if you get the bachelor's degree, to go on and get the master's degree. And we'll be talking to you more about that. So thank you for being here. And uh, you'll see me glance down at my notes because these contain some of the questions that have come up uh, in uh, recent uh, days and weeks. Just one last thing I'd like to say to you. Now, we were scheduled to have a town hall meeting. And uh, of course, because of the restrictions uh, regarding social distancing and no congregating, um, we can't. But I wanted to make sure that we got, to, that we can't have one the way we wanted to. But I wanted to make sure that we, um, we got this town hall meeting in before the end of the semester. It's a little different from our usual get together but it is something that I think is vitally important and necessary. Well, we received more questions asking about the fall semester than on any other topic. This was the number one question. 
And the simple answer is we don't know. We don't know if there's going to be a resurgence in COVID-19. We don't know if there's going to be a vaccine found. And so I can say that our faculty, our administration, and our staff, we are caucusing, meeting, talking now about what the fall semester may look like. Um, and of course, it won't be made by our campus alone. The state of New York, because the governor has to give direction here and the chancellor. And so the state of New York will have a lot to do with what's going on. Nassau County was one of the hardest hit areas. And so we are watching carefully of what the governor has to say. We're listening uh, at least twice a week to the chancellor and she has an executive team working on this. And so we'll be watching these things as we go along. But right now, we really don't know. And I can't speak to what those decisions will be only because once again, we don't know. A resurgence in the activity of coronavirus. Uh, we don't know if a vaccine will be found. Uh, we just don't know. But right now, we're planning for many scenarios. And I don't want to put one out there and mislead anybody. And so just know that we are working on it. We're diligent about it. And we have a great team. Uh, one, uh, I hope we can return to normal cam uh, campus life. I hope that we can, uh, well, resume our mm, normal operations. It won't be quite normal. Nothing will ever be the same again. And, uh, but I am confident that the cabinet, the staff, and the faculty, our provost, Dr. Duncan Quarles, uh, is working hard with the faculty. And uh, so I am confident that whatever situation may arise, we'll be ready for it and able to respond in a way that's going to be comfortable and helpful and encouraging for all on the old Westbury campus, especially our students. Right now, um, I, you don't see me with mask or gloves on uh, talking about normal activity, but we are practicing social distancing. Uh, in other words, the camera person who is filming this is uh, 500 feet away. <laughs> you, you know, that's a little uh, hyperbole, but uh, a distance away so that we're able to do this comfortably. But some of our classes, many of our classes may continue to be offered uh, in a hybrid uh, manner. We may do some video uh, conferencing, some Zoom, some whatever uh, the technology provides, but we would like to really return to our in-classroom uh, activity. Whatever it is, it'll be announced soon that in-classroom activity, a continuation of how we're operating now, the summer goes on the way we're operating now. And so you can expect those of you who will take summer courses that they will be uh, uh, distance, distance learning um, operations. We have on our campus an alternative care facility. That's the way it should be addressed. It was built specifically to address needs during the COVID-19 pandemic. It hasn't been used yet, and we hope it will not be used. It was built uh, by a contractor hired through the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, they did an excellent job. It's complex, uh, it has taken up a great deal of our time and a tremendous amount of our space. In fact, it has eaten up all of our athletic facilities, our fields, our gym, 
uh, our pool, all of that is offline. And I'm heartbroken for our athletes because they are the ones who will suffer the most with the presence of these three tents and uh, the takeover of our gymnasium. I think I've said to you that I hope that this alternative care facility will never be used. That's the hope. However, those of us at SUNY Old Westbury are encouraged, pleased, encouraged by, pleased with our ability to participate with the state government in addressing this terrible pandemic. Um, we want to be helpful. In fact, our being helpful is what Old Westbury is all about. Uh, this is where learning and leadership go hand in hand. Our campus provided the kind of space that was necessary in order to build these hospitals or these alternative care facilities. And that's the kind of service. Many of our students, in terms of your first year experience, in terms of uh, your internships at local not-for-profits, that's what we want you to be ready to do, to serve humanity at all times, but especially in a crisis. And I'm happy that our school, all of us, faculty, staff, administration, students, could respond in the way that highlights our mission. So kudos to Governor Cuomo. Thank you for considering us. We are happy to be a site for the alternative care facility in this part of Long Island. And we will continue to work with you to maintain this, these facilities, alternative care facilities, until they're no longer necessary. It's important that we do that because we don't know what will happen with this virus. Moreover, it's important that we do it because we want all of New York and all of the nation to know how valuable our state university is to all of our lives. And so these facilities will continue. Right now, protection for the facilities being uh, uh, done by um, the National Guard. They have a regular shifts on our campus to protect the sites. We encourage all who have nothing to do with the sites and we hope you never will in terms of getting ill, stay away so that they may be protected and ready for use if necessary. And right now, um, they are there. Uh, Happy that they are in case of emergency, and we are making plans to uh, work with our athletic department to make sure that our teams have a place to practice, uh, work out until uh, this crisis passes. The future of State University at Old Westbury has already been impacted, if for no other reason than the development of the alternative care facilities on our athletic fields. I talked to you, just finished talking to you about that. Our college is going to be strong because there's no place like us. I've been saying this over the years that I've been here. There's no place like SUNY Old Westbury. We have a hybrid here. We have commuter students. We have residential students. We have older students. We have the best mix of ethnicities and races and cultures than any other campus in the SUNY system. We are the most diverse. And so we may have to shift here, change there, but there's a need for us because we address, and if I can capsule it, poor students, poor men and women. 
Most of our nation is poor. And they need institutions like SUNY and particularly SUNY or Westbury to address the needs of men and women who don't have lots of money, who can't pay the private school tuition. That's our strength. And to do anything with SUNY or Westbury would be a vast mistake, a big mistake. We're close to the metropolitan region in terms of New York City, its five counties. We encompass the county of Nassau, and many of our students come from Suffolk County. We're centrally located. And so while we may do more distance learning, while our athletes will have to go to other facilities to train and prepare for sporting events, that too shall pass. And we will be able to come back together. And anything that disturbs what we have built together to serve our region, our state, and our nation, anything that threatens that would be a terrible mistake. And many on our faculty, those who are still with us, who started with us as a time before my time, will tell you that their commitment was to training and teaching and facilitating and helping and encouraging young men and women from key areas of this great state so that they may go out and own their future. This is very important. So I, I don't know what all the changes will be. There will be a few, but nothing will change our mission. And when you walk out of Old Westbury, you can be prepared to face any challenge and know you have the education that will back it up. I want you to listen to me because this is a hot one and I want to make sure I'm getting it right. So I may do a little more reading, but hear me. Our division of business and finance should have sent an email to all students last week, I'm sure they did, about how credits and refunds are being handled. Now you've got to read your email. This is one time when reading that email is crucial because that's the best way we have to communicate with you. Please, Read your emails and read them carefully, please. So business and finance has sent you an email saying how credits and refunds are being handled. For complete details, be sure to look for that email. Students who left residence halls on March 22nd or on their approved extension date will receive a credit for housing fees of approximately 47% of the spring charges. So just about close to half of your spring charges will be, uh, you'll be given credit for. Students with meal plans will receive a credit also of 46.96, I say 47%, of the remaining account balance plus any unused dining dollars and panther bucks as appropriate. A full-time and part-time student enrolled in spring 2020 semester on or after March 23rd and charged the following fees will receive prorated credits as follows. Prorated credits as follows. Now, if we were in town hall meeting, all the staff and faculty were here, I'd look to Mr. Davis or someone from his shop to get up and explain these details. So for your athletic fee, uh, you will get prorated credits as follows. For a full-time student, you get $82. For a part-time student, $41. Transportation fee, $28 for full-time students, $14 for part-time students. Student activity fee, $38 for full-time students, $22 for part-time students. 
the student activity fee credit equals 43.42% of the fee and the amount was determined by the Student Government Association. Let me pause now and thank X, uh, SGA for all of its help during this crisis. The SGA has been, as I understand it, particularly cooperative. And I want to thank its leadership and all who have worked to demonstrate that the students are behind maintaining a strong old Westbury. Thank you very much. I appreciate all that you've done. Now, when you see that student activity fee credit equals 43.42% of the fee, and the amount was determined by the SGA, the Student Government Association. Look at that carefully. And if you have questions about it specifically, then contact the Office of Business and Finance. But this is our way of returning or giving you credit for fees that have already been paid. I'm sure it'll help in some instances. We are striving to post all credits to students' accounts as quickly as possible, with a goal of having all credits and refunds completed by May 15th. All credits and refunds completed by May 15th. The Office of Business and Finance is working very hard. Now, we may miss one. And if you call it to our attention, I'm sure they'll correct it. But that's the answer to the question. It's a little detail, that's why I've read most of it. But I want you to pay attention, look for the email, and if you have specific questions, or after May 15th, have you, if you haven't received your credit or refund, then contact the Office of Business and Finance. Thank you, Student Government Association, once again. Yes, we do plan to have a commencement exercise for our graduates. We can't be specific on the date yet because it's a fluid situation. COVID-19, we, we don't know what it's going to do. And so uh, as soon as we have some specifics in terms of commitment to a date, we will let you know directly right away. And I'm encouraging all of you to be on point because that's something we really need to do. And that's have a graduation celebration for the men and women who have done such great work to get to this point in their lives. Now the CDC has also to weigh in on this because they ban mass gatherings and our commencement is no small gathering, it's huge. We're in the Nassau Coliseum now and what a great time we have. So I want you to know that, yes, we're going to have a graduation uh, exercise. Uh, and uh, as soon as we know what's happening with COVID-19, et cetera, what the CDC says about mass gatherings, we will let you know. Dearly beloved, I have asked the faculty at the SUNY College at Old Westbury to be as tough as they can. There's no social promotion here. I want them to strengthen you by exercising your cerebral muscles. I want you to work hard and learn. Also, I know from our faculty that through interaction with most of them. They will help you to build strong character so that you can face any challenge in any environment with certainty, confidence, courage, and a moral strength that we haven't seen in our nation in a few years. So no, we haven't told them to dump more work on you. We've just told them to give you the work 
that you will need in order to be proficient in whatever the subject matter is. And remember, faculty are human beings. They have families. They've got to deal with children and homeschooling. Uh, they have the same kind of challenges that you face. And this is a learning curve of sorts for many. So they may not get back to you in the time that you want them to get back to you, but they will. And remember, they are committed to your education. And so I believe in our faculty. No, we've not encouraged them to give you any more work in remote sessions than you would get if you were in person. It's just that you may feel it a little bit more because of your own unique situation, just as they feel it a little bit more because of their own unique situations. This is not business as usual. This is crisis. And remember, we had to turn this corner like that on a dime, I think, as the expression goes. So um, they are working you hard, no question about it. Nothing wrong with hard work. Strengthens you. And um, they are uh, trying with this change in the way we relate as student and faculty person. They're trying very hard in record time, record time, to give you the same kind of education via this new divide, these new divide, this, this technology. It's not new, but using this technology. So they will be back to you. You have to be patient. This is a crisis. And I think that SUNY Old Westbury, as my other colleagues in the State University, has responded extremely well. A little hard work never hurt anybody. And uh, be a little patient with the faculty and staff who are under tremendous pressure to respond in the best way possible to COVID-19. Has COVID-19, the pandemic, affected the planned renovation of the Natural Science Building? No, except we have to stop work. You know, whatever construction we were doing in there to fix this or that, the roof and other things, that had to stop, but most of that was completed anyway. The big task ahead is to raise the money. To raise the money. But no, we, we're still working. To, to build, not only to repair, renovate the natural science building that we have, but to develop a new science center. Renovation plans for the natural science building still on the table because the number of students who want to study in STEM professions, science, technology, engineering, math, some people put in the arts, they are increasing in numbers. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. They're increasing in numbers. And we want them to have the best facilities that money can buy. We announced earlier, and I think I mentioned it earlier, that summer uh, session will go on as we have uh, for this semester with distance learning and using other methods of um, uh, uh, instruction. So it'll be much the same as uh, the current semester. Um, I want to point out that you should take every opportunity to speed up the time to graduation because and summer uh, taking summer courses is a great way to do it. Uh, we have a, a large variety, a great array of summer courses available 
So check it out. Talk with your academic advisor, talk with the deans, uh, get enrolled in summer school, and uh, let's push up the time to your graduation. We would love for all of our students to graduate uh, in four years. And uh, for some who are really bright and can take extra credit, maybe shorter than that. So get on board with summer school. It's gonna be the same as it uh, is now, distance learning uh, and research. Research activities on campus this summer, those kinds of activities are on hold due to social distancing requirements uh, that we currently face. If decisions are made that allow those activities to take place, we will address the question at that time. So research on hold. And I know we don't like it. There's so many things that cause us frustration and disappointment, especially during this COVID-19 crisis. So until we have something different to report, that's where it stands. I have no idea what it's going to look like. I know that it will include the technologies that's allowing me to speak to you right now. Our creative use of technology, digital, digital communication, uh, Zoom, and the things that are coming that we don't even know about yet. That's going to revolutionize once again our ability to communicate, educate. And so, first of all, the faculty at State University and staff at State University of New York College at Old Westbury have worked hard together. And so let me applaud, and I'm not going to call any names. I think I might call a name or two just when I want to give you a name to who to, who, who to complain to. But in terms of thanks, that's everybody, but especially those who have helped us turn on a dime, those who have helped us translate the way we do our education business in a couple of weeks. I mean, we really didn't have much time. And the faculty and the staff rose to the occasion. They came through. We are educating near, over 5,000 students many of whom were used to coming to classrooms, gathering on campus, living in the dorms. We changed the way we do all of that in two weeks. Everybody, when you see a faculty person or a staff person, you ought to thank them. You stop and say, thanks, you know, that's remarkable what you've done. And you'll never know until you're in the same position. So they are to be included in our heroes, on our heroes list, because we would never be able to prepare the next generation without those who sacrifice. The new normal on campus, I have no idea. It may be like this, or well, it'll be like this through the summer. And depending upon what happens with COVID-19, but one thing I don't really want to walk away from and that's the importance of the interaction between faculty, person, and student. Distance learning, I understand why. Social distancing, I understand why. But we must never become isolated. Yes, even from that human touch. The ability to see someone smile right there with you to shake someone's hand, to hold someone's hand. This, the ability to look in someone's face, you can't really tell a person uh, totally by their expression, but there's something about the personal interaction, one-on-one -on -one, or one-on-many -on -many, that helps you to intuitively, to feel, to appreciate 
the warmth and love and concern of that person. And we need much more of that in this nation, especially with the two crises that we're going through. One being the terrible COVID-19, and I'll let you figure out the other one. And so, uh, I don't know what the new normal will be. I don't even know if we can get back to any semblance of the old normal. Whatever comes, I'm confident. There's no hesitation or reservation in me whatsoever that the administration, the faculty, the staff, and the students at Old Westbury, at this point in time, are able to handle it. We've turned our college on a dime. We've allowed uh, alternate care facilities and cooperated to build them here. Our enrollment looks like it's going to be okay. We've had the backup of talented men and women in business and finance to help us meet crises, situation and budgets before. And we have the moral leadership on our campus. So Old Westbury is in great shape. I'm confident that it is. And I'm confident that our students, faculty, staff, and administration can take on anything that comes our way because we're a strong college. There have been periods when we have not been as strong as we would have loved to be. But right now, there's no reservation in me whatsoever that as long as we continue to work together, we'll not only get through this uh, pandemic, but any crises. You know, I was with you in 9-11. And one of the things I said then was together we'll get through it. And we did. And we came through it even stronger. So thank you for being with me today. And um, I look forward to seeing you, hopefully, at some point before I exit. And I hope that this pandemic will be uh, conquered. We'll overcome it. We'll have a vaccine. We'll have whatever we need so that the death rate will go down and hospitalization rate will go down. And we can return to some semblance of what we knew as normal as we deal creatively with what will be, quote, the new normal. I'm praying for all of you, especially those of you who may have lost loved ones. I'm praying for all of you, those who may be dealing with uh, family members who are hospitalized. And thank God for all of you who uh, tested positive and have come through COVID-19 and are back on the battlefield again. So uh, congratulations to Old Westbury in totality. And uh, thank you for joining me in this town hall meeting.